We're glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And uh, we did promise you that we'll be looking at technology uh, in architecture, the growth of smart homes. That's what we'll be looking at. And we're glad to have a tech expert here, a digital product manager in the person of Oladi Pupo Bolaji. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. It's welcome. nice to have you uh, again on the show. Okay. I'm happy to be back. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, we had a guest before you and we had a glitch. Will we ever get to that time where we don't have these glitches when we're talking on Zoom or on any other connecting devices? Are we going to arrive at that point or there's something we need to do now? Yeah, so we're going to get there. <laughs> we, at least if you remember, we started with dial-up, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that when you have modem and telephone before you can connect to to your internet or at some point we get to a cyber cafe situation mm -hmm. where you have to stay overnight mm -hmm. before you can download anything reasonable and at some point we now start having mobile phones and now we are entering 5g so so we're getting better bandwidth uh, penetration is getting better uh, however we also now have more applications and more usage so like we discussed the other time on the show mm. we need to invest more mm. so it's a good problem to have that a you, good problem to have. yes okay. so it means that investors can actually come into the space improve the experience and they're going to make money so when you have that d demand so all you need to do is to up your supply which is in terms of infrastructure of course there are also challenges you see road constructions everywhere and once those road construction happens they cut fiber and some of those utility cables and co and that now poses a challenge to communication so i keep wondering why can't we plan those things better and thank god we are talking about architectures mm -hmm. too today mm -hmm. why don't why do you have to construct the road then later start breaking because so now we know that once we have road construction we need to have uh, electricity we need to have uh, uh, telecommunication uh, right. uh, lines so which we, sh we should be able to design that ground up have those pipe seal it up and when providers are coming you just lease it and people just run their pipe rather than breaking and breaking opening up opening up again and again so those things i think in my opinion cause some of these service uh, disruptions that we experience of course also the rural area too so you know it's also about economics right so that's why we still need government uh, intervention to support especially cities that are not commercially viable mm -hmm. like lagos abuja and co so the uh, providers will not have uh, incentive to deploy the best of infrastructure to that because uh, you know it's just economics so that's why when you travel to the interland you just notice some uh, a drop, a drop in your network performance because of the number of uh, subscribers or customers from that area so just so and those are the areas where you can have government intervene and when those areas become more viable the private sector will now move in and increase okay. uh, service there. It's a worried digression that we had because yeah, today we're right. actually talking about uh, architecture, like you mentioned, and uh, technology. So um, let's just give, get an insight into the role that technology can now play in architecture, especially in our locality, where we know as Nigeria, because in advanced countries, these things are not... We're not, they're not discussing them that we're like we're discussing now, but what role can technology play in our architectural designs and all that now in Nigeria? Yeah, so technology is pervasive, is, uh, is everywhere. And so and the good thing is also that uh, the architect, uh, the construction industry, the building industry, they're embracing technology right from the tools that they use. So. They are no longer using those, uh, um, what do we call them in school, 
uh, the board and the ruler and go now you have softwares yeah. that could give you very beautiful designs, designs and and uh, you know model it 3d and all that and almost immediately you can with the, with the client you can do iterations check it oh i want my guest room to be this way then different designs can come up faster than before so that's one but coming to the home itself you now have uh, technology empowering architects and builders to be able to deliver what you call smart homes okay. smart buildings eco-friendly homes so those are the things that technology has enabled and when we're talking about smart homes what are we talking about we're just talking about homes where you have uh, so there's what you called sensor controller and actuators so when you're able to put these things into any device mm -hmm. it makes them smarter it means that you can communicate with them and they can also send information back to you so if you have a coffee machine for example and that coffee machine is smart that coffee machine can make coffee for you and it can report when it's running out of uh, supplies maybe coffee beans water or something like that mm -hmm. so now we're having to build buildings that also can respond to whether when when the house needs more heat because the building is smart mm -hmm. it's able to adjust the temperature and control the thermostat uh, the th eating devices in the house to provide that comfort for you mm -hmm. and when it's uh, cold is able to do that yeah well interesting this information you're giving us um but that makes me wonder how much of tech have we involved in the building of our homes especially in lagos where we've experienced a lot of building mm, collapses correct. matter of fact it's been said that lagos has the highest second highest rate of building collapses in africa so how much of tech would you say we have involved or are involving in our buildings today so it's a two-way question right so tech in itself like we discussed at uh, this platform you need a uh, political will to make tech uh, succeed so mm -hmm. tech is just garbage in garbage out so if you you can have the best of designs but at the point of implementation if people begin to cut corners mm -hmm. if approvals are not uh, g uh, proper approvals are not given then it's a different problem of course tech will enable you to do your soil test faster to do your design faster to do your inspection faster now we tech, for example government officials could sit in their office and monitor construction actually you don't need to actually get people on the field to know what is happening with map and geo sensors everywhere mm -hmm. if something is happening in the streets and co you can pick it up you can zoom down and see and even view live as workers are moving on the construction site you can see how the construction is progressing so that tech can allow you to do and that tech is allowing people enabling people to do mm -hmm. but the human element mm -hmm. that's the problem but has it been deployed in lagos do you think so we have many offices that are smart office my office for example it's smart office so and i know a couple of offices and i know a couple of homes that are smart homes eco-friendly homes like that and uh, of course it's expensive i was just going to ask <laughs> because so, so that's why you may not be seeing many of it around hmm. but it's something that people are beginning to you know uh uh develop uh adopt and also we also have <coughs> smart homes in uh, what i'll call a little way so people are also beginning to have at least smart devices in their homes that can control lighting mm -hmm. that can detect human presence uh, that can be used for security and, and all that like uh a couple of weeks ago we were working on a project so this it's uh, 
actually one of those things that power smart homes. So this is a controller. Mm. Uh, this is a sensor. So this this thing. So <laughs> yeah. So this sensor yeah. is for weather, humidity, and uh, gas. Mm. Yeah. So 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 if I program this, it could help me to know if there's a gas leakage in the home and could alert me. Can it also alert you if your gas is about to finish? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that we need to. So this one is only sensing the environment the leakage. Mm -hmm. leakage. So for, but that's an interesting thing. Why does gas always finish on Sunday? We need, <laughs> to, we need to discuss that. It's a serious that. matter. So, but of course, when you have a cylinder that a smart cylinder, mm -hmm. that will be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So a smart cylinder would. So do we have smart cylinders now? We can. I, I think we, we do. can. We can. Oh. It's 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 a matter of uh, putting embedding this controller and a sensor inside it. But I'm sure if we check around, we should have smart cylinders. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, you were talking about the fact that there are smart offices. You mentioned yours as well as a smart office. How many of these smart offices are owned by the government? Because I was asking about <laughs> whether it has been deployed by the government. If it is, if it is private. Of course, private will be a little bit more expensive to consult and all that. Does the government, in trying to watch these buildings that are being constructed, for instance, you know, do they have a smart office that can do the work that you're describing? Uh, so or, let, let me add another one. Or, if they don't, how much is their level of consultation with the people that own the smart offices, like yours? So one thing I know is that most people in government, especially senior ones, many of their homes are smart homes. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so, homes. Yeah, so, so it's not a new knowledge to them. So the challenge is why is government not deploying technology mm -hmm. at the rate at which private uh, sector or private company does? Okay. I think it still come back to infrastructure, power, how, how many hours of power supply do government uh, facilities uh, have uh, bandwidth then most importantly procurement <laughs> so procurement in government is usually an issue and the lastly sustainability mm -hmm. so when a dg or a government initiates a smart project are we able to continue it so the next person may just terminate that contract they may like oh it's overpriced and so there's always this uh, bottleneck around government so not because they don't know they don't have it or they don't use it in their private but when one oh, i don't know so you know i always <laughs> tell you that once it's okay. something around government yeah i, I can't run figure away. it out i will yeah. support you run away uh, well but just a yes or no that means Lagos is ripe enough to start deploying this. In fact, they are deploying the technology, yes. and we can start having smart homes, and the technology around architecture can be better if there is a will, like sure. a political will. Well, and it's not res restricted to Lagos, is it? Yeah, other no, parts no, no, of, no, 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 other parts parts of the country yes, that yes, are already well, deploying this? Yes, sure. I well, 5G, there, of course. help us in that. Sure. Okay. It's one of those use cases of 5G. Okay, good. I uh, would like to thank you. I wish we had more time. I think we'll have a part two of this, uh, if it is uh, going to be possible. We'll talk to the producer so that you can come tell us more about what we need to do. Because right now, this uh, smart device here, uh, it, it doesn't look very expensive. It's like something I can install. Yeah, you can, you can get them in the Kedja, you know, and, and, and play with it. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to have a smart home <laughs> very soon. <laughs> so we'd like to thank you, uh, Oladi Pupo Bolaji, for coming on the program. And it's always a pleasure to have you around. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So Oladi Pupo Bolaji is a digital product manager, and he's been talking with us on... Uh, uh, smart homes and uh, the deployment of technology in architecture and we covered so many other grounds that we didn't even anticipate but like i said if there's a possibility we'll have a part two of this but for now let's take a break we'll be joined by wale agbede who will be taking us around the world sports stay with us <laughs>